Daisy Head Maisie by Dr. Seuss It's hard to believe such a thing could be true, and I hope such a thing never happens to you. But it happened, they say, to poor Maisie McGrew. It happened like this. She was sitting one day at her desk in her school in her usual way, when she felt a small twitch on the top of her head. So Maisie looked up, and she almost dropped dead. Something peculiar was going on there. A daisy was sprouting right out of her hair. Behind her was sitting young Herman Butch Strudel. This looks like a daisy up here on her noodle. It doesn't make sense why it couldn't be so. A noodle's no place for a daisy to grow. Then up spoke another boy, Einstein Van Tass, the brightest young boy in the whole of the class. It's a very odd place to be sprouting a daisy, but nevertheless, one is growing on Maisie. Hey, look it, cried Butch, right here in this room. Daisy had Maisie, she's bursting in bloom. Miss Sneecher, the teacher, came running up quick. Such nonsense, some child is playing a trick. Which of you boys stuck that thing in her hair? You know that a daisy could never grow there. But teacher, said Butch, I saw the thing rise right out of her head with my very own eyes. Just give it a yank if you think I tell lies. Miss Sneecher had heard quite enough of this talk. Maisie, hold still, let me get at that stock. Ouch, hollered Maisie. Quit yankin, said Butch. You're giving her pains. I bet that those roots go way down in her brains. The kids in the room started shouting like crazy. Daisy head, Daisy head, Daisy head, Maisie. Children, be quiet. Mrs. Sneecher was puzzled. Good grief and alas. To think that this happened right here in my class. I've taught in this room twenty years, maybe more. I've never seen anything like this before. I'll have to report it. You'll just have to come to the principal's office and show Mr. Grum. Now the principal good Mr. Gregory Grum was a very wise man just as smart as they come. He knew more than anyone else in this nation about long division and multiplication. He knew all the answers, why oceans are deep, why skies are so high, and why mountains are steep. He should have the answer to this thing on Maisie. My word, he declared, it's a genuine daisy. I've seen them quite often in fields growing wild, but never before on the head of a child. Now what in the world ever made this thing sprout? I have no idea, but I'm going to find out. It says here, it says, daisies grow on the land. They grow between rocks, they grow also in sand. It mentions right here they can grow in a pot, but mention the head of a girl it does not. Daisies, it says, sometimes grow in Alaska, also Missouri, Rhode Island, Nebraska. They grow in Japan, and in Spain and Peru, in India, France, and in Idaho, too. They grow in South Boston and also in Rome, but why should they grow on this little girl's dome? Say, look it, said Maisie. It's wilting, said Teacher. How wonderful, Maisie. It soon will be dead. You'll be rid of that daisy. In a few minutes our troubles will pass, declared Dr. Grum. Take her back to the class. Then the principal saw the most terrible sight. The daisy was dying, and that was all right. But that daisy was part of poor Maisie McGrew, and Maisie was starting to wilt away too. Teacher, said Mr. Grum, you know what I think? They're both going to die. Hurry, bring them a drink. This is a problem, said Grum with a frown. You take Maisie away, and you make her lie down. You lock her up tight in that room down the hall. There are quite a few numbers that I've got to call. Get Maisie's mother on the end of the line. I need her here quickly while there is still time. Maisie's mom asked, What's all the fuss? 
goodness to Betsy, I'll be on the next bus. A call to the shoe store reached Mr. McGrew. He answered while holding a customer's shoe. She is growing a what? I'm coming right there. And he ran out of the shoe store with no time to spare. A doctor should see her, the principal said, and an expert on plants like the one on her head. So he called Dr. Eisenbart, who said, Goodness gracious, a child with a head that is partly herbaceous? I simply must see this. I'll come over to you. And his patient, though shirtless, came to see it too. Then Grum called Finch the florist to grab for his shears. I'll be there as fast as my truck can shift gears. Meanwhile, poor Maisie lay down on a couch. The daisy slumped down on its stem in a slouch. But the window was open because it was warm, and the sweet-smelling daisy attracted a swarm. Of bees, 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 bees. Maisie jumped out the window. What else could she do? But the faster she ran, the faster they flew. In the park she ran into Officer Thatcher. The bees on her heels were starting to catch her. He said, wait a minute, kid, I'll be right back, and left Maisie alone to fend off the attack. But Thatcher returned with a fishbowl and a bucket, into which went the fish from the bowl, then he stuck it. On top of her head, she felt like a fool. Kid, I'm taking you back to your school. Principal Grum didn't know what to do. It's worse cried Mrs. Sneecher, much worse than we feared. The Daisy and Maisie have both disappeared. Behind her came charging Mr. McGrew, chased by a customer chasing his shoe. Finch the florist, Dr. Eisenbart too. Dr. Eisenbart's patient and Mrs. McGrew. Then the door opened and in came poor Maisie, wearing the fishbowl protecting her Daisy. Then Officer Thatcher, who looked all around, said, Anyone here know this kid that I found? Mama, cried Daisy as she ran to her mother, but Mrs. McGrew stepped back with a shudder. I think I feel faint, she just managed to utter. Stand back, yelled the doctor as he looked about. Allow me some room to examine her sprout. The doctor approached stethoscope to his ear, but the wail of a siren was soon all he could hear. And then, without warning, the door opened wide, and who but the mayor would step right inside. At acting important, there was none to compare. He was best at long speeches, chock full of hot air. I promise, my friends, that if I'm re-elected, this Daisy on Maisie will be disconnected. The law of our fathers is simple and sound. Daisies belong and should stay in the ground. The rest is illegal. We'll bar them from town. Then, just as the mayor finished his talk, Finch the florist began to quietly walk, and standing directly right behind Maisie, said, I know the way to get rid of this daisy. So there's a flower between her two ears. I'll snip it clean off with my sharp pruning shears. But Maisie, she saw him and let out a screech. She pushed him aside and raced out of his reach. Maisie ran from the school, headed straight out of town. She came to a meadow and fell on the ground. With her head in her hands, she lay all alone. Her heart, it was broken. She could never go home. Nobody loves me. Nobody loves me. Nobody loves me, she cried. Nobody loved her. Poor Maisie McGrew. It's hard to believe such a thing could be true. And maybe that's why, then, this Daisy above, when Maisie below began talking of love. Well, you know about daisies, when love is in doubt. The job of a daisy is try and find out. They love her. They love her not. They love her. They love her not. Don't worry, Maisie, said her daisy, as the last petal fell. They love you. Then the stalk disappeared. Well, that's how it all happened. The thing went away, and Maisie McGrew is quite happy today. Back at her studies and doing just great, 
and all of her subjects in room number eight. And concerning that daisy, you know that it never grew out of the top of her head again ever. Ting! Er, well, it practically never popped up there again, excepting occasionally just now and then. And after all, I'm getting used to it. The End